Welcome, everyone, to the first episode of the 3POA podcast. Thanks for joining us. I am your host, Laser Pants, a.k.a. Ryan, and I'm joined by the one, the only, you know him, you love him, Mr. Tony Roberts. Hey, guys. Really looking forward to this, uh, this first show. A lot of preparations gone into this. Um, look, looking forward to it. And great to see... An amazing turnout, um, 56 people, 59 people watching already. Um, awesome. Awesome to be here. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. And you might know him. He's the man behind Action Force, Valiverse himself, Mr. Bobby Valla. What's up, gang? What's going on, Bobby? Oh, you know, excited. I'm excited. I'm, I'm pouring a shot right now for this celebratory event. I'll drink to that. <laughs> I um, dig the new background, man. Yeah, I'm in the, uh, this is the Action Force conference room. So uh -huh. on the, the conference room is made. So on one side, it's all Valiverse Action Force. But on that side is all the vintage Action Force. So it's like a now and then kind of thing. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I like it. Uh, the, the, the table is a custom table on my shelf. So I can't wait to. Show that in a nice new tour video. So, hey, let's drink to it. Yo, I'll drink to that. Cheers. I, I wish ah. I had something more than tea. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Well, I don't know if you noticed, but I have new surroundings behind me. This is my basement. I'm no longer in that tiny little office. I have a lot more space down here for my collection. Um, my wife was asking me, so, so what are you going to call it? What are you going to call your collection room? I was like, I don't know. She's like... Uh, the laser cave, the, the, <laughs> the, the, the pants dungeon. And I was like, um, hmm, how about the pants palace? Ooh. The palatial pants palace. That's like where I'm it. coming to you from. I, like <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's a work in progress. I, but it, go ahead. I like laser cave. It's so okay. dumb. It's hilarious. <laughs> well, right off the bat, we got some super chats. Uh, Jim Largo, thank you very much, man. Congrats on the three POA podcasts. What a fine bunch of hooligans. Hooligans, yes. Fine. Maybe. <laughs> thank we'll you see. very much. We'll yeah. <laughs> and then we've got one from Mr. Jeremy Jernigan. He said, Tony could have sworn I saw you piloting a robo skull earlier today thanks for the super chat jeremy tony yeah, yeah i'll tell you what those things um they don't handle very well <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy to drive and then uh one more from berserk 69 what's up berserk he said wanted to pop the super chat cherry of the three poa thank you very much much appreciated so we got a few things on the docket tonight. First, we're just going to have a little chat amongst ourselves. Um, maybe you're, for sure, you're probably familiar with Tony. But if you're jumping over uh, here from the Infinity Equation podcast, maybe you only know me and Bobby. And then uh, 
vice versa. Maybe you're only familiar with Tony and Analog Toys and you've never seen Infinity Equation or Bobby on his channel. So um, you get to know us too. Right? Yeah. And then I think we're going to get into like some, some, some toy news a little bit later. And uh, oh, we got a chat from Daniel. Yeah, I just wanted to put this one up. These, uh, did you explain the three POA name in the beginning? Um, we are just leaving that for you guys to figure out. Maybe we'll tell you later down the line. But uh, yeah, I think we've all got our own interpretation of what it stands for. <laughs> I know what I think it stands for, but yeah, we'll we'll leave that out there for now. And <laughs> holy crap, uh, Sal! Whoa, two Whoa. cent toys with a very generous super chat. Thank you, Sal. Thank you, Just because I love the three of you so damn much. Uh, I love you too, man. We all love Sal. <laughs> Sal's great. <laughs> Thanks very much, Sal. Yeah, that's very generous. Um, so let's start with uh, Bobby. Bobby, let's go to you. Tell us a little about yourself. How did you get started collecting? What do you love collecting? Um, what lines are you into? Well, I will say that I'm a child of the 80s and 90s, which I think is better than being a child of just the 80s, because I think we had the better of the toys in the 80s and 90s. So a lot of people that that caught, like, say, G.I. Joe in, like, 82 and, like, were hardcore until, like, 85, 86, didn't get some of the great stuff that we had in the early 90s, you know, Batman animated series, Kenner mm -hmm. Predator stuff. So for me, I've been shit, a toy collector forever. Um, toys were such a big part of my childhood, and they they never really stopped. I took you know some hiatuses here and there, but it was always something that was very important to me. So you know, GI Joe is my all time favorite toy line. I've got a room in my house dedicated to to GI Joe. It's got just about every line that I feel exists, and. Um, you know, and now it's like I, I collect, you know, a lot of a lot of vintage, a lot of modern now, um, you know, whereas I used to just collect Joe. But now I've, I, you know, uh, during my years, you know, especially working for different toy companies, you know, it got me into de different modern lines. And now that I own my own toy company, I'm always companies are producing and what they're putting on, you know, just because, you know, I want my line to evolve and I want my line to get better. And the only way to get better is to see what's what's being put out there to see, you know, the good stuff, the bad stuff, that that sort of thing. Um, you know, so so, you know, competition and, you know, research always help you get better. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of kind of it for like my collecting habits. Um, what was the rest of the question? <laughs> there was a lot there. Uh, how about we just start at the beginning? What do you have a, like a cool memory of like the, the first time you remember? getting a toy or falling in love with the toy line as a kid or, and what, what about it spoke to you? I, I'm not, I can't really remember like things that like, like toys that I had that were like really meaningful. I remember like certain, like a, 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 a scattering of memories that, that are kind of important to me. Like, you know, I had a, the Darth Vader carrying case for the vintage star Wars figures. And I had my case filled with vintage star Wars figures. And I remember when, you know, I would have like off from school for like holidays or something like that. My dad would bring me to work and I would bring my Darth Vader carrying case with me and like play in his office uh, with my Star Wars figures. So that that kind of thing is important to me. Um, there's, uh, you know, the, the 89 Batman movie, I would say was the most impactful thing in my life as, as a kid growing up. Uh, that's the like the first movie I can remember our, our parents taking us to go see. It was also my first memory of actually drawing. Like I remember we went to go see Batman and then we went out to dinner at like, I don't know, like a, like a, a restaurant, like a TGI Friday's kind of restaurant. And I remember like they had a placemat there and they had crayons and I drew, I colored Batman and the Joker. My dad says he has it somewhere. I would love to see it. But that was, I was, shoot, what was I? seven at the time so that was like one of my earliest memories of like drawing which is now you know a big part of, of my life moving forward and then that 89 batman movie you know seeing the movie getting the toy biz stuff then getting the kenner stuff you know uh i had all that stuff it was really important also it's a that stuff was kind of important because at the time like before like 
my parents got divorced like early at like mid mid 80s and then when i i remember like then i went to go live with my dad and and, and he would pick me up from my mom's house and you know on on the weekends and we would stop like we live my mom and dad lived like an hour away from each other so my dad would have to you know drive the whole way and he'd pick me up and we'd stop at this little convenience store right when we got off the highway and he would always buy me packs of the 89 movie batman cards so like i have really fond memories of like that and you know i still tell him this day and it makes him cry it's really funny but i i got him a couple packs of the 89 batman cards and made him cry but um you know, that, that movie as a whole was so important to my childhood and just growing up. So it was like, that's probably like the one thing that stands out. I got a lot of other, other really great like toy memories that, you know, I'll, I'll get into one day, but that, you know, that, that stuff is, is it in a nutshell? Yeah. That 89 Batman movie was yeah so huge, important. man. Like it, if you didn't live through it, like you couldn't understand yeah. how huge everyone had that Batman logo t-shirt in 1989. Everyone was wearing that thing. Yep. Um, yeah. Tony, how my, about you, my, man? Well, my connection to the 89 Batman movie, like, you know, it was the summer of Batman. It was my, well, actually it was winter here in Australia, but it was my first year in Australia. I'd been in Australia maybe nine months, you know, having moved from England. And um, for me, the significance of that is like, I went to see Batman three times in the cinema um, which I'd, I'd never seen a movie more than once in the cinema. And from the time I saw the first one, I, I went to the first screening. Um, and then I was probably over about six weeks. I saw it a second time and then the third time. By the third time, I'd started to grow hairs in places I didn't have hairs before. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> it just became that kind of show. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right. Well, hey, let's get to a couple super chats here. Yeah. Uh, first one, Brian Dillingham. Thank you very much. He said, keep up the great work. Thanks, uh, Brian. The jury's still out on great work. <laughs> but thank you very much. Um, oh, and of course, the thing jumps. Uh, the next one, Cornelius McGillicuddy. Thank you for the super chat. He says, sup, y'all. Bobby, do you own the Action Force trademark? MFers on his tank are saying you can't use the Action Force name in the UK. Not true. I own it, buddy. You keep, keep go go on his great place. You all hang out there, you and Kenny and all them. Go ahead and enjoy that time there, bud. Thanks for spending <laughs> your money on stupid comments. <laughs> <laughs> you broke up a little bit. Um, I was that just on my end, or was oh. that no? It was on my end as well. I, okay. Oh, I sorry. No, just okay. just let just let the people on his tank just hiss at each other all day. It's good. <laughs> yeah it's, right. it's, a, it's a great form you guys you guys have there this is awesome really fucking awesome all right well um back to the host um i guess it's tony how did you get into toys i mean what was what was your line as a kid i know what everyone that watches analog toys knows but just in case just in case yeah <laughs> just in case look uh, gr growing up in England, like in England, it's a very cold country, so you're always indoors. So toys were a part of my life from, you know, the the age of a the age of a toddler. Um, when I was very very young, I had a chips dress up costume, and I had a three wheeled uh, blow molded Batman tricycle that was, you know, I pretended was my was my chips bike. Um, and I'd ride around on that, but I started off playing with Fisher Price Adventure People. But my really distinct toy memory from childhood is one that actually changed the entire course of my life. And it was the day that I was in the back for some reason. This I got this vivid memory. I was very, very young, probably about four. And for some reason, I, I think I was in the backyard, but um, I was. <laughs> I was given one of my brother's action man figures to play with. And my, I remember my dad handing it to me and it was like the basic soldier with the beret and the SLR. And I was like asking my dad, what, what is this? What, what, what does he do? And he's explaining what a soldier is, you know, they're in the army, they defend the country, they go fight in the wars, fight the bad guys. And I was like, I'm going to be a soldier one day. And that toy was so impactful. Um, 
the, from that moment on, I was always going to join the military, be a soldier. And then obviously as, as my, my life progressed, I decided to set up today in the collection room with one of my action man cases because of this question coming up, you know, when I got into collecting at the age of 16, which very early for, to get into collecting vintage toys, that's because my dad's a collector. He collects die cast metal soldiers. Um, the only thing I collected through the nineties and the early two thousands was action man stuff. Um, but I also got really into action force when I was young. So I've told this story before, but now this story has another chapter to it because when I was that little kid in the backyard looking at my, at my dad going, I want to be this one day, you know, that led me to joining the military. What I never realized was that I would actually be this one day. And one day I will be the modern version of this. Um, this That's is awesome. my very, very rare mint on card first series desert rat. There's only believed to be about five or six in existence mint on card. The only action force carded figure rarer than this is the Australian jungle fighter. So thanks Bobby for turning me into a figure that is very, very expensive to acquire. You could have picked a cheaper figure. Maybe make me the mission pilot or something. <laughs> well, hey, don't don't put it down yet, Tony. Since it's the first episode of 3POA, why don't you just rip that thing open? We'll check out the figure up close. Um <laughs> No, I don't want Junk Man to call me an asshole again. <laughs> oh, I'd take it as a compliment I, from him, but yeah. <laughs> I, I have three loose versions of the figure anyway, so I'm good. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I'm Ryan. If you don't know, if this is your first time seeing me on a stream, I co host the Infinity Equation podcast. My earliest memory. Uh, playing with toys was my brother is six years older than me. So my earliest memories were breaking his transformers and go bots. Um, <laughs> boy, he, he, we did not get along. I got beat up a lot, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, th the first time I remember, like, I'm sure I had action figures before this, but my first memory was Fridays were shopping day for my grandmother and my great grandmother. They'd go shopping at Kmart. And occasionally I'd be with them on Fridays when my parents were at work or, or whatever. And I remember seeing the superpowers Superman on the shelf. And there was a lot of figures there back in those days. Like it's not like it is now huge sections of the aisle would be all one line. You know, it might even be the whole toy aisle, you know, might be like superpowers and just star Wars or transformers or whatever. There was tons but I, I saw that superpower Superman and I had to have it because I love the Super Friends cartoon. It, it was It's the first cartoon I think I ever remember even watching and like kind of being obsessed with. I love that superpower Superman. As a kid, I think I had three of them because I would lose the capes, break them. My brother hit one with the lawnmower. I left it outside in the yard. Um, and then <laughs> my, on the weekend, yeah. I left it in the grass and he was mowing the yard and it, it was, it, there was nothing left of it, man. Yeah. Don't, don't worry about kryptonite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also, you know, in the eighties, uh, my family was pretty poor. So we, we went to the swap meet a lot because you can get stuff you needed for real cheap. Well, I, I don't remember aside from one rare occasion, ever seeing a star Wars toy on the shelf. I was born in 81. So by the time I remember, you know, my memories kicked in, um, Star Wars was already gone. But, but the last wave was 85, the power of the force. Yeah. Yeah. And that wasn't as prevalent as Return of the Jedi in 83, 84. So, yeah. But at the SWAT meet, you know, kids in 78, 79, they had grown out of toys. So their parents would have tables at the SWAT meet and they would be selling off all these old Star Wars figures. I remember a sign a lady had at her table and it said two for a dollar. And I was looking at him. I'm like, Oh man, this is so cool. Cause I was very familiar with star Wars. Uh, my mom had taped the empire strikes back off of TV. And um, so I, 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 
seem to remember like picking out Boba Fett. I want to say Boba Fett was my first Kenner Star Wars figure and a stormtrooper and I think an alien. And then around 1989, my cousin, who was about five years older than me, he wanted to get rid of all his toys. So I got his entire Star Wars collection for $50. Like I had to, you know, I, by 89, I was mowing my grandmother's yard to earn money and, and, um, just stuff like that. I would mow the neighbor's yard and, you know, get five or $10. And I saved, <laughs> it was probably a few months, which seemed like forever, you know, as an eight or nine year old. And, um, I got this massive Star Wars collection. I'm talking Adat with the box, ATST with the box, Rebel Transport with the box, Y Wing with the box, Rancor with the box. Probably about 30 figures, loose figures. They had a lot of the weapons. Um, did you care about the boxes in those days, though? I loved them. Oh, cool. I did. I, I had all the boxes until I sold them as an adult. Yeah. Because, you know, so I'm the modern collector of all of us. Bobby, you kind of do both. Tony, you're almost strictly vintage. You dabble in a few modern things, yeah. some legends and classified black series, but I'm strictly modern. I had to make that choice a while ago because the collection was getting really big. And, you know, before I had this house, our, our last house, we were renting. And so we moved a lot and it was just a lot to carry, you know, for, I think we moved five or six times in eight years, probably. Yeah, and, you know, by the time we bought this house, That's a pain in the butt, man. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, so I had to sell my vintage collection, and I still had all the boxes up until I sold them in 2015. And I don't know if you remember, but 2015 that's really when vintage stuff really started taking off. I mean, it was expensive, yeah. but once the hype for Force Awakens started, those numbers just they just kept going up and it was like crazy. I, I made enough money on that collection to take my wife and son to Disneyland for a week. And if you've ever been to Disneyland for a week, you know, that ain't cheap, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, I, I kept those boxes as a kid. Um, and then when 89 Batman came out, that was huge. I had the toy biz stuff. Uh, the one place that I had as a kid was the toy biz Batcave. cave. And I love that thing. And I know I said I don't collect vintage, but a local guy had that 89 Batcave for sale uh, maybe a year ago for $50. It was missing a couple pieces. I had to get it. That was the one place that I had to get. And to this day, I think that's one of the coolest play, uh, play sets you know, from the 80s or 90s. It had so many cool play features and, and uh, you know, had like the falling rock and it had the the winch you could lower the the villain in the jail into the, cell. the jail cell. Yeah, yeah, it was really cool. Um, but uh, you know, I played with toys probably for a little bit too long. You know, like maybe 13, 14, Like most kids have grown out of it by then. But Didn't I was we still. I'm, well, I'm getting to that. Secretly. Right? Yeah, I, I know. I, right? was, but, I was like 13, 14. I was still into toys, so I'm with okay. you on that one. Well, I remember being in middle school, like sixth, seventh grade, and I was like hiding that from my friends. Like, I can't, no one can see yeah, that sorry. I have these toys, right? You know, because it was, by that point, it was embarrassing. It was like baby stuff, you know? Um, Dude, I, so I can remember being 14. The The house I lived in with my mom and dad, it had a, it had a pool room. My dad had a pool table. Yeah. Never played pool on it because it was always covered with my G.I. Joes, the, the Tomahawk. <laughs> by that stage, I, I found it, a lot, you know, when you're real young, you play with your toys on the floor. When your dad's got a pool table and you clear everything off it, it's just this nice green, yeah. And I and I would have the tomahawk on there and the ore striker and all the Joes and set up checkpoint alpha. And um, I haven't thought about that memory in a long time, but I was doing that at like 14 years old. Yeah, secretly that way. If I ever invited friends around to the house and they went into my bedroom, they didn't know I was still playing with toys because it was in another room. <laughs> Yeah, my so my parents' house, they had this like rockery atrium off the front of the house. And the rockery, you know, was full of dirt. My mom would plant flowers and stuff. And that's where I would take like my G.I. Joes out, play in the dirt. You know, I get the hose and make huge like mud puddles. And I, did, I never had any G.I. Joe vehicles, but I had like Tonka trucks and stuff that they would fit in 
like old die cast Tonka trucks that I think my uncle had gave me. And I'd put my Joe's in there. And, but as I got older, you know, you're out in your front yard in this atrium, but you know, it's all glass. All the glass was broken out by that time, but it was super embarrassing because I'm like, all the neighbors can see me playing with these action figures and I'm like 14 years old, you know, but, um, you know, when you're that age, you do grow out of it, whether you want to or not, you know, just like playing with action figures in that way, it loses its appeal around that time. But that's also right when the Power of the Force 2 came out from Kenner. So yeah. that was the first time I had ever seen, aside from one odd time, I'd ever seen Star Wars figures on the shelf at like Target or, you yeah. know, the drugstore or wherever. And it, even though those figures don't really hold up because they were odd proportions, we, you know, they were really muscular and they, they didn't look anything like the characters from the movie. It was so cool just to see them on the shelf. Um, and so that's, that's pretty much when I transitioned to a collector. I remember one year my parents and my parents were totally supportive too. They didn't care if I was 15, 16 and I wanted to buy toys, you know, they would buy them for me for gifts and whatnot. And, but that was kind of the moment that I went from a kid playing with toys to a collector collecting toys, you know, as a teenager. And I, for the most part, I haven't stopped since. And, it, you know, it's it's been Star Wars and DC comic stuff and Marvel comic stuff. And and now that Classified came out, I, you know, I, I've been getting back into the military stuff, G.I. Joe and Action Force. Very soon. Very soon. Very soon. Very soon. Very soon. Can't wait. Uh, let's get to a super chat. Yeah. It's uh, this is from Plockman 040. Thank you very much. Thank he you. says, Hey, Bobby, can you explain how you search the trademarks to find you could use Action Force? I am, I really am interested in just looking at the cobwebs. Uh, I mean, I've talked about it a, a number of times uh, on podcasts. You got to get trademark, get a trademark attorney, it makes it a lot easier. And all you got to do is, is go on the you know, the, the US trademark site and search them out. It's, it's that easy. So a lot of people, myself included, confuse trademark with copyright. Co copyright yeah. copyright can is for the design of something. Trademark is for the name. So for instance, if someone wanted to make another red shadow trooper, you I mean, you can buy the name, but you can never recreate that 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 figure, that same design, because copyrights last forever. Whereas a trademark will run out and, and you can secure a trademark, which is how I purchased the Action Force trademark because it was left abandoned since 2005. And, you know, the same thing with Steel Brigade. Steel Brigade was, was left and, and forgotten. And I, I went in there and grabbed it, you know. But it's like I got Action Force because I wanted that brand to live on. I wanted it to, to be rebooted. And, yes, it can never be the original Action Force that people want. But this is something new. And, you know, if if Hasbro had kept Action Force, I bet you they would have re rebooted the brand, you know, and, and these things happen. So, yes, it's not original, but it's still the history of Action Force. This is still in the timeline of the history of Action Force. So it's just something new. And with Steel Brigade, that's my all time favorite G.I. Joe. So, you know, people are, are pissed that I took Steel Brigade. It's because I I want, you know, I want to do Steel Brigade. It's the same thing with the person doing RoboSkull. They love Robo Skull. It's one of their all time favorite things. So they went and they got it and they did their own Robo Skull. I wanted to do my own Steel Brigade. I didn't do the exact same version of Steel Brigade. I did something new. So, you know, uh, I, I adhere to, you know, the the copyright aspects of things. You know, yes, there's always going to be some similarities with things, you know, as you're designing. But, you know, I try to make sure that my stuff is is different from from what's out there. You know, I'm always doing research to see, you know, the stuff that I use is is all, you know, a lot of real world military stuff and, you know, but, you know, guys on his, they, they like to, you know, have their own web of history. So you guys are awesome. But you well, I mean, well, I'm, I'm very thankful that you're not doing a straight up copy of the original desert rack. Cause 
while I while I don't mind wearing shorts, there ain't no way I'm having <laughs> socks like that. <laughs> and I mean, just to be clear, Bobby, uh, you, your probably number one IP is GI Joe Absolutely. slash Action Force because Action Force was the GI Joe of yep. you know, yep. the UK. Yep. You have a, I mean, you love it and you have a deep respect for it and you want to protect it. Right. Um, yeah, I, I actually absolutely want to protect it. Um, you know, uh, yeah, like, like I said before, a lot of people think that I hate GI Joe's just because of some of the, the feelings I have towards the beginning of classified and, you know, some errors of GI Joe. I literally have a 400 square foot room in my house that is just dedicated to GI Joe. So and it's amazing that, that that shows you can go on my YouTube channel. There's a tour video of the room. You can see it there. That shows how important that toy line was to me and still is today. Yeah. 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 And there's, yeah. there's links to the Valiverse YouTube channel in the description of not just this video, but all of the analog toys videos that will, will at least dating back about six months or so. Oh yeah. And, 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 and for anyone who thinks that you just, crap on gi joe they need to watch the live stream that we did last week because the, yeah. the amount of people who've reached out to me during the week about how good that was because there were some things we were critical yeah. of ah oh, you got him you got him you got it cool man because because sal came I, I met up with sal the other day he gave me this and he gave me this big boy right here oh Whoa. Lab. nice um yeah, yeah leave it in the box then it doesn't fall over <laughs> I have a feeling when I take that out, it might get a little weak in the knees. You know, at, at how good it looks. <laughs> Shout out to Ryan. I hope you met up with Sal in like a in like a mall car park late at night, like you were doing a drug deal or something. <laughs> you just we, were, we, were, and we were literally in a mall parking lot when this went down. Yes. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> in a mall parking lot. <laughs> but uh, you, you know, to to the people that say that all you do or all we do is is, is bash GI Joe and. And Hasbro, I mean, you you want GI Joe to be successful. You want it to be good, right? Yeah. And so, if they're putting out crap, you're going to criticize it because you want it to be good. Yes. You know what it is. You know what it is. It's I think the sensitive people out there. You know the the sensitive toy community that's out there. Um, Hiss and Foosh. They when you when you have your own toy company. And I think it's also because I, I'm the I'm really the only one that does this. It's like not everyone's out there on podcasts like regularly, you know, giving opinions and this and that. You know, guys like to just please everyone and make everyone happy because we all want to have, you know, flowers and rainbows in the toy community. It's like, why can't you be critical of something? And it's like, I guess because I have a toy company and yes, my stuff isn't in people's hands yet, but that's going to change very soon. People have yeah. some ammo to say, you know, why, why, why are you so critical? I'm critical because I work in the toy industry. I'm not like I can, I can be critical. I can be critical because I know what it takes to make this stuff. I know what it takes to go into this stuff. So, you know, if, if I'm not allowed to be critical of toy lines, then tell me why, tell, tell me what is, what is the law? What's the toy community rule that I can't be critical of toy lines. And it's, it's just because I, I have a toy company. It's like I put my uh, the target on my back, which I understand. It comes to the territory. But I guess, you know, s some people would rather me be like some of the other smaller companies out there where no one no one says anything negative. And, you know, everyone everyone loves everything. It's like I don't want to love uh, everything. Yes, do I want great toys? Yes, but not everything that's put out there is is great. And I think you have to be critical of that kind of stuff. Yeah. I even say, like, listen, my stuff isn't perfect. No toy is perfect. No toy leaves the factory and is perfect. Every toy will always evolve. It's just a matter of how great can you make that toy in the time that you're given and how do you learn from that and evolve and make it better for the next series or wave? Makes sense. I just wanted to put this comment up on the screen here. Typo negative says, uh, G.I. Joe isn't putting out crap, bro. Well, G.I. Joe isn't putting it. Hasbro are putting it out. Not to be pedantic and correct you, but... Um, you know you know, what's funny though? you know, have you guys ever heard of these things? I think it begins with an O, and I'm trying to remember what they're called. I think they're called fucking opinions. 
I'm pretty <laughs> sure every asshole on the planet can have an opinion just like having an asshole. It's yeah. my fucking opinion if I want something, if I don't think something's good or not. I'm not telling you you can't like it. If you like gold shin pants, hey, man. <laughs> I'm not telling you you can't like it. I'm saying I don't like it. I don't yeah. like gold shin pads. I don't like Nerf blasters. So, yes, bro, you know, I can have an opinion just like you can have an opinion. It's all good. And just, yeah, just real, real quick before we get into some super chats, um, I think our biggest issues were with wave one, part of wave two, and the distribution they, in 2020. They, they course corrected in the right direction. So they are they're on point, man. Listen to the, the stream that we had last weekend. I exactly. was praising everything that they they reveal. They yeah. listen, it's like I just said, it's a matter of how you take what you did and learn from it and make it better. And they did that. They course corrected in the right direction. Yeah. Great. I love it. Dude, this figure's fucking awesome. It's absolutely yeah. fucking awesome. But since like er 2020, like early 2021, summer 2021, I like almost every figure a lot. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah. I, I bought them all. I bought eight Vipers. I'm only going to have six left because I'm sending two to Tony. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah, let's get to some super chats. Jeff McElway, thank you very much. He says, Tony and Bobby, I blame you both. I had no connection to G.I. Joe or military toys. And now, just damn you both. It's hurting my Lego budget. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we got... Thanks for the super chat, chat Jeff. Yep, thank you. And then we got a super chat from Toy Connections. Thank you very much. He says, Bobby, any plans to compile the first five or so Action Force comics into a trade paperback form for future purchase ps what beer are you drinking i only g drink excuse me drink cheap american beer so i am for for this this uh you know premiere episode i'm drinking champagne but mm. when it comes to beer it's it's usually high life or rolling rock i like i said i drink cheap american but when it comes to bourbon i'm like a real snob like i drink very high class bourbon so it's weird it's a you know it's a weird dynamic that i have but uh to answer your question Yes, I literally just hired an individual to run the comics for me just because it's it's a huge undertaking. And they're, you know, they're growing and we're, we're evolving the comic line. I, I wanted to bring in someone that can run the day to day for me. So this individual is, you know, a, a professional comic book editor. He's been in the business a long time. He is taking over everything. He's got great ideas. He's going to be talking with publishers, you know, looking at printers, looking at Diamond trying to get you know the, the comics out to more retailers we're talking about trades that sort of thing so uh yes our, our plan is to definitely do trades but we're gonna have uh so there's issue six seven and eight are the last of the character issues so if you notice like each issue has been about a, a specific character or two those that's issue eight will be the last of them and that issue is about that man right there desert rat mm. so after that issue, we're going to go Big right Big announcement, into folks. Big announcement. <laughs> issue 8, Desert Rat. Uh, after, first. Uh, after that, we're going to go into the an, 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 like a legit ongoing series. So we're really excited about that to like now that we've introduced characters to then keep the story going. And, you know, um, the, the individual that I brought on to be the, the managing editor is going to take care of all that. And Bill's still on board to write it all. So, you know, the story that he's coming up with, uh, you know, with, with our input together is, is fantastic. Um, you know, we had to, we had to change it a couple gears on the story because there were aspects of it that I was using in the movie script. And now that the movie script is locked in, we're like, Oh, well, we don't want to kind of give that away in the comics. So we're going to have to change direction. Whereas the comics and movie will have a slightly different story. You know, just like like all comics and, and movies are, they're never 100% exactly what they are. So they're going to like run parallel, but on slightly different roads. Cool. And then Scott Hughes, thank you very much for the super chat. He says, congratulations, <laughs> gentlemen. Tony, I made it back in time. Bobby, I have some cool designs for your new blaster. Ryan, 3D print a RoboCop leg holster. <laughs> <laughs> are you offering? I don't have a 3D printer, but yes, I'll take you up on that. I'm going to have yeah. to uh, modify my own leg, though. 
Uh, and then we got a super chat from Unboxing Art. Hey, man, thank you. Unboxing Art, just so everyone knows, the artist behind my avatar, which is right there. So uh, he's, a, he's a really cool artist, really cool guy, great YouTube channel. Uh, Unboxing Art says, can't get a company to evolve and get better figures if we just suck the sack of ass, bro. Subpar <laughs> 7, et cetera. Thank you. Thank hey, man, you, listen, listen, listen. There's nothing wrong with the guys that just love everything, you know, some some pixelish shit out there or something like that. Like, if that's it, listen, if that is is how you like people to talk about your toys and how you want to want to like toys, that's OK. Go to that fucking channel. <laughs> we give our opinion. You know, that O word that everyone has that people don't tend to understand that everyone is entitled to. I yeah, know. yeah. And Here's a really good example of that, right? And and I'm not assuming by any means that a video I made there was people at Hasbro who listened, and then I'm not I'm not assuming that I wasn't the only person who made this video. But I did a video last year about the first wave of the Mandalorian retro collections, so the three and three quarter inch retro collection Mandalorian figures. And my biggest complaint with that line was giving the basically series one Mandalorian figure, a vinyl cape. I was like, in the timeline, if this had have come out in the original Kenner era, it would have been post Return of the Jedi. By that stage, they were doing cloth goods, um, capes and all that kind of thing. I've seen the images of um, Wave 2, which is based on Series 2. Mando's now got a cloth cape. It was, I'm, I'm sure it wasn't my video, but a lot of people in the community went out there and went, we don't like this. And somebody listened and they corrected it. Mm -hmm. um, or you just keep your mouth shut and you keep getting dumb vinyl capes. <laughs> Up to you. Hey, it's hey, you know what? You know what? Go ahead, Ryan. In, in the case of Classified, look what we got in the first couple waves and look what we have now. I'm telling you, if, if the community here on YouTube and, and online wasn't criticizing those first two waves, <laughs> we want to have the awesome figures we're getting now. Yeah. And then, and then like, like I'm thankful that, that the team there is listening to the fans. Like that's what you yeah. should be doing. You should be listening to the fans, you know? Yeah. That, that, that's typo of, negative that's guy. Course. What was that? That typo Sorry. negative guy who said, you know, GI Joe isn't putting out any, any crap. If you, if you can't take, um, say roadblock from wave one with the electric hair straighteners, <laughs> compare him to the bat figure that was just been announced. Compare the two of them. If you can't tell me that there is a huge difference and that the first wave wasn't crap compared to what they're doing now, you are not looking at this objectively. You, well, not only that, compare, compare it to the Amazon roadblock. The roadblock that's... Yeah, like, yeah, perfect, the perfect example. That's a, that's a perfect example. You got a crap roadblock and then you got a re-release crap roadblock and then you got a, a quasi-heavy duty roadblock and then it was like, oh, fans don't want that. Mm. We listened to them, and you got a great roadblock. I said it's a great figure for all you hiss and foosh sensitive characters out there. I said road, Amazon Roadblock is a great figure. Okay, and just to be clear, he's not talking about Robo or Veebs. He's talking about randoms yes. on their message yes. board. Which I, I don't go on. Work. I'm just here. Like, I get messages, daily messages from friends of mine. They're like, what'd you do to so-and-so, you know? Yeah. They're, they're like, they're all about you. Like, they write daily stuff about you. Listen, if you want to take the time to, to bash me on a, on a message board, buddy, you could be putting that time into learning a skill, learning a language, coming up with a company, making money, doing something. If you have kids, hang out with your kids. Go, go and meet girls or something or guys or whatever you're into. Go and do something with your life. It, listen, I'm not going to stop you. I think it's funny. If you want to bash me on a message board, that shit is hilarious. Because who's the one wasting time? I'm not sitting there reading that shit. I'll let other people read it and tell me how funny it is. You want to waste time. I had someone send me a screenshot the other day, and they referred to me as that other guy. I was like, Yes. I made it. I'm the other guy. That's awesome. I love it, man. 
a couple more super chats, uh, and then we'll get into some HasLab stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's um, yeah, we'll try and make these answers to these super chats pretty quick. Yeah, Bobby, any updates on the mm. novel? Love all that you were doing. Bill's still working on it. Don't worry. All right, still working on Thank it. You. Thanks for the super chat, uh, Toki Death Hammer, mm -hmm. if that's how you say it. Uh, real quick, a non super chat, but Brian Dinsmore says, "Hey Ryan, whenever you came over as a kid, GI Joes were always missing. You're awesome." All right, first of all, I was young, and I had sticky fingers. That's my cousin, by the way. Um, <clears throat> he was the Bobby. He was the one that met up with me at uh, Joe Fest. Gotcha. Okay. A little short Italian guy walking around with me. Very, very short. Got I it. mean, like, like four foot five. Not that short. I'm just busting his balls. But uh, yeah, you know what? I'm sorry. I was eight years old. I took some of your GI Joes. I shouldn't have done that. I'm an adult now, and I'm not a thief. <laughs> I learned my lesson. Um, and then I mean, you know always pay him back and just give him any wave one GI Joe classifieds you've got. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sending him a, a Viper though. I'm already getting. I'm already sending <laughs> two of those out to someone. <laughs> Uh, Todd Smith, thank you very much for the super chat. He says, Bobby and Tony, what's your opinion on how Hasbro could hit a home run with their reissue of O-Rings? I am so happy they're coming back. We we kind of we touched on this uh, on the show last week. So if you want, check out check out the, the stream from last week. We when we get into the reveals and we talk about O-ring, we, we talk about that a little bit. Yeah. I in my opinion, just really quick, uh, it I don't like that they're re-releasing you know, ace with it. I, I wish they would have led with Scarlet and, and the co-pilot because ace is a, a 10 or $12 figure. You can get them really cheap. Everyone's got an, uh, an ace. So it's like, why not offer something we don't have? And also it's kind of like the star Wars, the, the, the retro collection. I I'd rather see them do figures that didn't come out. So like when they did grand Moff Tarkin, like that's cool. You know, even with the the new Sky Striker, they're doing uh, Night Force uh, Ripcord. It's like, I like that. That's a good direction because the figure never came out. I would like to see them do figures that actually never existed and never came out and, and do it that way rather than give us figures that are easily attainable kind of thing. Because we all have that stuff where the majority of us have it because we have huge collections. You know, give us. And if you're going to re-release a figure that was already done, do one that's that's more rare, you know, um, you know, something like that. Yeah. My my only comment to that is for them to hit a home run, I think it's going to be a real challenge for them given that they're selling a, a, a two-pack of figures for $40. I think that that price, I understand why it has to be that price because of rivets and screws and metal parts. Um, I think that's going to be a real challenge to the success of the brand. Um, or or the, the line, sorry, not the brand, the line. Uh, yeah, I, I personally don't think it will last just – not just because of its O-ring figures, but because of the scale. Like, like Hasbro doesn't... They can make... You know... The cost of making these things at three and three quarter is about the same as making a six-inch figure. Yeah. You know, so... Well, they're the same price, so... You know, right. And, <laughs> $20 and, and, a figure. You get a three and three quarter O-ring or you get a six-inch. Right. And, uh, I mean, that's why I don't collect three and three quarter Star Wars anymore. It's because they totally nerfed that line, dialed back articulation, and they're so hard to find, and they don't put very many out anymore. So, I mean, that's really what put me on the Black Series. So I, I imagine that Classified is their flagship Joe brand going forward. Um, and then Jim Largo, thank you very much for the Super Chat. He says, Ryan, are you excited for the new Toy Biz style Marvel Legends Cap and Iron Man? Any thoughts on future releases you'd like to see? Yeah, I think they look really good. I just don't like that price point. $32, and all you get is a stand and a cardboard background. I mean, I, I, I don't see the justification for an extra $10 because of that. But I think they look really good, and yeah, I pre-ordered them because I'm a sucker. Um, what a coincidence. I might talk about a piece of cardboard later in the show. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, speaking of cardboard, World Made of Cardboard, thank you very much. He says... Have you have any of you seen Mezco 112 Roadblock and Destro? I have them both on pre-order. So do I. So do yeah. I. Yeah. You know that guys, I like a GI Joe product. I pre-ordered a GI Joe product. <laughs> oh my god, fucking crazy. Yeah. 
And I think right. the um, um, the the Destro with the smiley Joker face, that's so dumb. Yeah, that's the bad head. <laughs> I liked it. I don't know. Uh, he wears a metal got- mask. It's not liquid metal. He wears a metal mask. He should look like Man in the Iron Mask or like, you know, King Baldwin yeah. from Kingdom of Heaven. It's like I always found it funny that, you know, and this would this would bother me. I'm going to be critical about a, a, a series one classified figure, even though it's a it's a great figure. The Destro figure, he has ears. He's he wears a metal helmet. He wears <laughs> ears. He has like rivets and and scribe lines in him, but he has ears. Like, just think about that for a second. Like, just stop and just think about that. I understand in the cartoon he had to make his mouth move and stuff, but ears and and a mouth moving like the original figure the original 84 figure he had ears but they weren't like real ears they were like the shape of an ear as if it was covering because you're wearing a helmet you know designed correctly by ron rudat it's like in the cartoon they give him ears and now everyone thinks oh he's gotta have ears now because that's the way he looks no he doesn't look that way it was just you know artistic liberty for the cartoon which is just silly makes no sense uh, I've, never, I've never actually picked up on that before. And you that, that's my only, that's my favorite figure from wave one. And you've just ruined that figure for me. No, Thanks it's a much. great figure. Listen, that's a great figure. The only problem with that figure is that he has, he has ears. Like that's it. That's, that's all it was. When I was working on the six inch Joe line, when I was at Hasbro, I had done like some sketches of how I would have made the Destro figure look. And he would have looked like, he had, like, if you watch Kingdom of Heaven, now, Michael French in the chat, you know what I'm talking about, because that's one of our favorite movies. King Baldwin had leprosy, so he had this mask made, and it was Edward Norton, and his, his voice was muffled, because it was just a, a, a forged metal mask, and it was cool, because you saw, like, his scarred eyes, but then he just had, like, a slit in the in the lips that he kind of talked through, but you, you heard it muffled as if someone was wearing a real metal mask, and that's always how... I pictured him, you know, it's like metal mask, not liquid metal mask. This isn't, you know, Terminator 2 G.I. Joe here, you know, maybe it is. I don't know. Something cool. Uh, Tony, thanks for bringing up that super chat that I missed. Uh, Shindarius, thank you very much. He says the figures in the first G.I. Joe classified wave was loosely based on the characters they were supposed to be. Hard pass for me. That roadblock was some dude that wasn't roadblock. Yeah, there you go. Well, it was exactly. based off that that shitty app game that we now have has seen fail, and they they shut the servers down or about to shut the servers down. Yeah. But that was yeah. that was mistake one was catering to that and go you know and and, and having all this rich history of GI Joe and these great designs and then catering to an app game which, you know, you know we've all seen that you know not not a lot of toy based app games really survive so why would you follow that but yep yeah all right well i think we can move on to some uh some news oh we got one more super chat let's get to that and then we'll move on to some uh toy news for the week red green thank you very much he says bobby i missed if you said anything about this but do you think hasbro missed a golden opportunity not making the sky sky striker 112 scale I think it would have hit 20,000 as it crosses multiple brands. So so we talked about this, I believe, on the last show, but I'll touch on it briefly. Yes, it was a mistake not doing six-inch classified for your, your HasLab because that's what you're putting all your, your, your eggs into. Like, that's, that's it. That's your bread and butter. That's what's selling right now. To go back and do O-ring was an odd choice for me. You know, it's like, I love O-ring, so don't get me wrong. It's like, there's, there's part of me that really likes it, but... To me, it was more of a, like, I didn't understand the strategy. It's like, you know, go with what, what you know is working and classified is working. However, if they did a Sky Striker at one twelfth scale would be 10 feet long if you want to do it correct. So it's like for price, that's why you went O-ring. However, you could have easily done a $230, $40 his tank or a vamp, or, you know, maybe even a $300, you know, kind of like Mauler or Mobat, something in, in that vein, well, which is something I would have rather have seen. 
you know, or yeah. it's like, listen, you could have done a Serpentor in his air chariot. I had, so for my line, when I was working on it, as we had our waves planned and it was when the GI Joe three movie would have came out. So we had movie mixed in with classic, which is just like you're getting now for comic con of that following year, which would have been 2017. I had Serpentor and his air chariot planned. That would have been our comic con item. So that would have made, that would have been a really, really cool Haslab item. If you had them on a cool, you know, clear flying base that looked like, you know, the trailing of smoke, like that could have been super cool. Um, you know, put some missile effects on, you know, or, you know, blast effects on his, on his blasters and missiles and that sort of thing. You could have made that thing, you know, a hundred dollar figure or, you know, $150 figure, but made it very, very compelling. And it would have fit in your, your classified vein that you're, you know, you're, you're doing so well with. Yeah. Yeah. I think if they, if they, if they were to do a HasLab for classified, I think an ideal choice, you know, around three, 350 bucks would be the vamp with maybe um, towing the howl or towing the MMS or something like that. That's that to me is an ideal um, has lab for GI Joe classifieds. And uh, Beta Ray Bob, the last show was a live stream we did here on Analog Toys last Saturday. Was it Saturday? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was here on Analog Toys. It was. Um, I think. I think the description of it is you know we, we're discussing the GI Joe announcements from Hasbro PulseCon 2021. So. Yeah. Just so, you look at the channel page. It's uh, the, yeah, the last video that was posted on this channel. All right. Well, um, let's move on. And the three POA podcast, you know, it, it's going to be mainly toy focused, but we'll also, you know, we'll discuss pop culture stuff. Like maybe we saw a, a new movie or we, we want to dive deep into a television show we liked or, you know, comic book or whatever. But um, we will cover weekly toy news. And this week, we had some HasLab updates from the Star Wars team, the Rancor. They did a live stream on Friday morning. Um, they didn't show much new with this HasLab Rancor. It was... So they, they did, like what, what a 35-minute stream. Yeah. The first 10 minutes was just waiting. Yes, yes, like a countdown clock or something, and then uh, yeah, they didn't show much more than what they showed at PulseCon. It didn't make a lot of sense to me. It's almost yeah. like what they showed was what they wanted to show at PulseCon and didn't have stuff ready in time. I don't know. No, you're right. Um, they didn't even show us a, a fully painted Rancor model. They just showed us the uh, an actual grayscale model. So there wasn't much new. Um, so we saw this, we, they showed a picture of the Gamorrean guard, which was released, I think in 2018, uh, going into the Rancor's mouth. I think the scale is right on. So I, I saw some people saying it's too small, but I it, thought it was too small. I have to go back and watch Jedi, but yeah, no, I, I, I think it's just about dead on man. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. The Rancor wasn't like huge Kaiju size. It was. You know, it's probably about at most it was 20 feet tall. Uh, this rancor is about 17 inches tall, which I think is about right. Um, they showed a comparison shot with the Haslab. Uh, See, I, I don't know. I don't know why they're bothered with this because it, you're comparing this to three and three quarter scale vehicles. I don't. It, I found this image confusing. I, I think they're ju they're just trying to do a perceived value. Like I've mentioned perceived yeah. value a couple times, and it's like they're showing you things that they released previously around the same price point and saying, look, they're comparable because of size. The the the, the barge wasn't around the same price point, was it? No, the barge was like five hundred bucks. Five hundred, yeah. 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 Unless you're a Hasbro employee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you say what you got it for? Uh I think it was like I think it was like 250. It was like half wow. price. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. That's why it was like you could tell they were scared because they didn't understand yeah. crowdfunding. They yeah. released a big thing and they said, hey, employee discount. I should have jumped on. I think they put the limit at three for employees. I, I only bought one. I should have bought three. 
It yeah. was hilarious, hilarious. And then it was like it skyrocketed at the end because they didn't understand crowdfunding. But they they were like halfway through, like literally that employee discount came out like halfway through the funding. They were so scared because they thought like, oh, it had to have fun like the first like two days. No, that's not how crowdfunding works. So because it didn't, they panicked. They literally panicked. And I remember every day like they had the designer or the marketer with the model, the gray model, right by the the front door where you come in, the employee entrance, showing people the sale barge and how great it was trying to get them to buy it, to pump their numbers. That's how silly they were back then, if they just understood and did some research on crowdfunding. But yeah, the barge, I made a, I made a killing on, uh, you know, on, on reselling my barge. So thanks, Hasbro. Yeah, if you would have gotten three, you'd have been uh, sitting real Right? Quick. Shoot. <laughs> when I think about it, like what I sold it for, and then I see what the prices are going for now, I'm like, oh, I should have sat on it. But it's like, how are you going to sit on an eight-foot box, you know? Yeah. That thing takes up some real estate. Um, you said going to sit on it so they don't fall over. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it... Like I said, we didn't get a painted version, just the grayscale. And then they showed, let me go back the other way. They showed the first unlock tier, the Gamorrean Guard, which is still available at retail price at all your major online retailers. I, I have it already. So great unlock. Great unlock. <sighs> I, have, I have four. And look, of course you do, thing. Ryan. <laughs> I, there, the gimmick is that it's on a Power of the Force retro card, you know, with the collector's coin like the Power of the Force had. Um, so the first unlock, to clarify, is a useless coin and a piece of cardboard. <laughs> now, so, go ahead, Ryan. I was just going to say, this makes sense from a movie standpoint, because the Gamorrean Guard was in the pit, Rancor ate him, right? Spoilers. Um, so I, I get that it makes sense, but you have to take into account, you, you want to build excitement for this HasLab, right? Because it's a crowdfunder. You want people to get excited and, and then back it, right? This just seemed like a... I, I've seen Hasbro getting torn up in the comments before, but this one was like next level. I mean, everyone was like, really? I can go on Big Bad Toy Store right now and buy this for $30. Yep. You know? if everyone in the comments was tearing them up. I thought it was only YouTubers who were negative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, like, this is, this is where I, I, I hate that I have to do this. I have to almost give a disclaimer every time I make an opinion. For you, you know, for you sensitive toy people out there, I'm going to give an opinion on this. G.I. Joe, I'm going to say something nice about G.I. Joe and Hasbro. They course corrected in the right direction. They listened to fans. They, they knew what needed to be done. When I saw that they released the Rancor and they didn't even do a digital render. So that first gray model you saw was a digital render. It wasn't even yeah. a gray model. This new one that they showed is an actual gray model. So... You couldn't even take the time to digitally color the Rancor. The G.I. Joe team, they showed the skyscraper. They came right out of the gate. They said, hey, we're going to show you everything. We're going to show you a digitally rendered skyscraper so you see what it looks like. We're going to show you digitally rendered figures. We're going to show you unlocks. It was like you saw a gray Rancor and was like, have fun. Spend now $300 on this. And I was like, whoa, okay. Give me a little bit. Like, tease me a bit, you know? <laughs> and it's like, then the following week, it's like, wait a second. They got to show us some unlocks, right? You show this? Like, man, like, guys, listen. They deserve to get roasted for this. Like, you can't, you can't do that. You showed another gray Rancor. Like, you could easily, all the vendors that Hasbro spends money on, the, the freelancers that do the outside work for them, you could have paid your sculpting vendor to digitally color that gray model you had. So at least tease us a little bit. Show us what the Rancor's going to look like color. It's like, and then, yeah, you give us the Gamorrean guard. Now, I don't know this for sure, but I would like if someone, a big Star Wars fan in the chat can tell me, if the Gamorrean guard was ever released 
on the Power of the Force card. I know a lot of figures were that weren't part of that last wave, but they did like Darth Vader and some Lukes on Power of the Force cards with the coin. I don't believe the Gamorrean guy was part of the Power of the Force line. So that's nope. what's silly about it. It's like, I get it. The yak face that came with the barge, he was part of the Power of the Force line. He had a yep. coin. Why do this? It wasn't like they did it. They didn't do it back then. So why do it now? Because you just tried to find a lame way of making people buy or fund for a figure they already have. It's like yeah. you could have came out, you know, Grant, I, I bet you one of the next unlocks is probably going to be the Rancor Keeper if they're smart. Should have led with that. Should have led with that. And yeah, made the because... Glorian Guard like your second one. You know, at least gives gives give people some. They're putting their money, and you got to give them some. It's like I would love for them to do Ula or a new slave layer. They're probably not just because of society. But you know, it's, seeing this, I was just like, oh. And it, it's kind of one of those things you get disappointed. I'm disappointed as a fan. It's like I'm going to back the Rancor. It's like I wanted the Rancor, but it's like, man, it's like, come on, dude. Like, throw us a bone here. I mean, the Rancor Keeper should have been the first one, not only because that's probably the character you associate most with the Rancor, right? But this Rancor is not going to be at retail. So if you put the Rancor Keeper at retail by himself, what's going to happen? Well, he's going to yeah. peg warm. Yeah. If you don't have the Rancor, why would you want the Rancor Keeper? Yeah. You know, that should have been the first unlock. Um, now, I... I fully like like my uh, I put this out in a Facebook group or something. I think the Rancor will hit twenty thousand backers. So whatever unlocks they have, I think we'll get them all. But the Rancor Keeper is so essential; it should have been the first unlock, just in case mm -hmm. you didn't have enough backers to unlock him, because you need to have the Rancor Keeper with the Rancor. And if you just yep. put him on the shelf at Target, he's going to peg more. Yep. And he's a lot, and he's all new tooling because he's a short, fat guy. So right. he's all new tooling, and that's you know it's a big undertaking. But listen, man, when you're when you're crowdfunding, it's like you could put that stuff out there. Like that's easy. But what, watch, I, how, how much you want to bet they give us something lame next, like a C three PO covered in in green goo, like when Jabba knocked him over. <laughs> oh watch. man! Watch. Well, I, you know, I was talking with Sal, and he was like, "Well, the next unlock will be." you know, Luke Skywalker with the bone. And I, yeah. And, and I was like, I, I totally, I would not be surprised at this point. I said, but it'll probably be just Luke. And then the bone will be the third on that. <laughs> that uh, yeah. Really uh, bone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. To, to add insult to injury as well, like go, going back to uh, the, the post con reveal of this rancor, so, as you said, like comparing it with the G.I. Joe um, presentation, which I, I, I thought the Joe panel absolutely, they nailed it. So, last week, they only show us a digital render, no, no color. This week, we get another really boring live stream that, you know, I've seen people in the chat here saying it wasn't worth waking up for in the UK. Um, we see the, the real model with a, a boring unlock. To add insult to injury... This was one thing that we all knew was coming because some dummy accidentally revealed it months ago. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, like nobody crazy. knew the Sky Striker was was coming out or any of this other stuff. Like we knew the Rancor was coming, so I'm like, I want to see what the Rancor was coming with. And here we are, after now two streams, and it's like, oh, it's a useless coin in a piece of cardboard. Thanks. Yeah, the the head of marketing, I think, on the Black Series team is the one that spilled the beans on the Rancor. Patrick. Some dummy. Yeah. Right. That, that's Bobby's old drinking buddy back when he worked at Hasbro. Yeah. 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 Listen, when he when he spilled those beans, he must have been hanging out with uh shit, what was his last name? Steve, the guy who was the design director on the Star Wars team who leaked uh who leaked Star Wars stuff and almost got fired when he when he went to go read the script down at Lucasfilm. So yeah. I'm sure I'm sure they were probably sitting around. He was probably like, hey, you should probably leak this. It'll be great. All right. I mean, so um, before we get to this next super chat, let's. I mean, Tony, what characters would you? There's four unlocks. If you were to yep. back this Haslab Rancor, what four characters or unlocks? It doesn't have to be a character; it can be something else. What would you have chosen? 
Um, rank or keeper would have been the first one. Yeah. Um, Ula, the dancer, for sure. Um, I want a Jedi Luke with the bone, not the bone separately. And we were discussing this yesterday. A fourth unlock, I would actually not like a figure for the fourth one. Those three figures, so Ula, Rancor Keeper, Jedi Luke with the bone. And I, an unlock that I would really like to see would be a nice, a really nice display base, maybe with some skulls in it and things like that, designed where you can have the Rancor standing on it and, you know, Luke kind of looking up with the with the bone in his hand, ready to, to fight the Rancor. I, I think a display stand for this would be would be awesome. How about you, Bobby? Uh, yeah, I'm with Tony. Uh, you know, Rancor Keeper, Ula, um, a new Slave Leia. You know, yes. we all know why that's not going to happen, just like we're not going to get Hooded Cobra Commander. Um, you know, but like, yeah, that's pretty much it because we've gotten everything. Look, we're getting a Bib Fortuna. We got Lando in, in the Skiff Guard outfit. I mean, you know, you could do something like a, a Nikto or, or uh, Barada, um, you know, that that weren't part of that scene, but, you know, are part of Jabba's Palace nonetheless. You know, who actually, you know, Barada came with the, the Power of the Force coin. Um, <laughs> you know, um, I mean, I, I'm partial to that that weird dog that that barks at C-3PO and R2-D2 when they come into um, Jabba's palace. You know, that one right before oh, yeah. they go down the stairs. That, mm -hmm. that funny little dog, you know, um, do that. A Beomar monk, maybe. Oh, Beomar yeah. monk would be very you know, cool. There, there's some cool, there's some really cool stuff in Jabba's palace. But listen, there's a lot of stuff you got to get to. And, you know, the fact that Ula gets eaten by the Rancor, the Rancor keeper, it's like, you got to, you got to do them. I, I don't agree that we should get a Luke with a bone. I mean, if anything, you should have made, because the Gamorrean guard comes with seven fucking different weapons here, why don't you give him a bone? Because we that Luke, that Jedi Luke that they did, is the, the Jabba's Palace Luke with the tunic and the cloak. We're good. We're good. Kind of yeah. like we have a Gamorrean guard. We're good. You didn't need to do that. So Turn the guy bone. <laughs> so, so the guy bone, you know, you should have had the Gamorrean guard come with a bone. Um, but you know, that's that's where I'm at. And and not the uh C grip weapon holding hands. Because he <laughs> never you know, if they would have swapped out the hands, maybe made him come apart of the torso so the rancor could bite him, you know. I would be much more okay with this Gamorrean guard. But um, yeah, I mean I'm hoping for an Ula. I mean de definitely Rancor Keeper. I, and I I have no doubts that's going to happen. I would love an Ula because we'll never see her at retail. Um, and I, I would think if they're going to do Ula or Slave Leia, it would be part of a HasLab. Because I yeah. think all the drama over you know, the Slave Leia was because some weirdo saw it at Target and decided to, to be offended over it. So just uh, change the name like they changed the name of Boba Fett's ship. Just call it Belly Dancing Leia or something. Right. See, the thing is with Hasbro, once they get like, once some bad press comes about something... You don't go back to that well. Yeah. You know? Mm. All right. Well, um, yeah, Ula, Slave Leia. Um, I, I wouldn't mind getting that guard that's uh, kind of grabbing Luke after he throws the skull yeah. at the door controls. Yeah. Like, that guard would be cool. Or Hasbro will never do this because it would be really big. But how about just a Dio piece? of that door that falls on the yep. Rancor's head. Yep. That would be cool. Uh, so before we move on from this HasLab project, let's get to a super chat. Did you have something you want to add, Bobby? Yeah, I gotta, I'll got i tell you guys a funny story. Okay. Uh, if, you, if you want to for a minute, just because it made me think of like Slave Leia and why they're not doing Slave Leia. When I was working on the, the four inch Marvel Universe line, when it was then called Infinite and then Legends after that, one of the last waves, there was a red She-Hulk. I remember she kind of has like a, a, a V kind of cut in her costume and it shows a little bit of cleavage in the, in the comics. So we needed some samples for toy fair. Uh, but it, I don't think it was American toy fair. I think it was toy fair in UK or, or, or Asia, something like that. But we had our, our China team do the paint masters, the, the samples for that, that, those that that toy fair 
and they they widened the 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 gap on uh, Red She Hulk's top. So it like came out real wide and like put like gave her some huge cleavage. <laughs> we got so many emails from Marvel and like Hasbro upper management, like you can't do this figure, blah, blah, blah. So the figure almost got killed in line, but we had to like tell them like, no, they painted it wrong. This is what it looks like. And even then they were like, change it, cover them up totally. And if you notice on like the real figure, it just comes down to like her collarbone. Like it, it dips yeah. you know, really shallow. So it's just kind of funny, you know, how things like that happen. Just a bad paint job can almost ruin a figure. I'm going to have to relook at that. I, I have that figure. I'm going to have to, I never really noticed. But anyway, uh, let's get to the super chat. Tree Theodore, thank you very much. He said, it didn't make sense to me either, Tony. So I went down to my local vintage shop and voted with my dollar and bought a vintage friggin' Rancor. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Yep. Um, um we got a super chat from Keith Knight as well. Thank you very much. Keith is a is a dear, dear friend. And just before I read this super chat, um, those of you who are on my Patreon would have seen this. I did an unboxing on Monday where I got a um um a mystery box from my dear friend Keith Knight. Um that video is only available to to view on Patreon. So I wanted to take the opportunity to to publicly thank Keith again for reuniting me with a beloved childhood toy. So I've got here the Corgi Gold Mazda pickup truck with the incredible Hulk figure in the back. And Keith is such a legend that this Corgi toy actually came in two variations, one with a grey cage, one with a red cage. I had the red cage one as a child. I'm not complaining because the grey cage is a lot rarer. But not only did Keith send me the rare one in loose, really minty condition. He sent me the red one in original Ooh. minty box. This is gorgeous. Keith Knight, I love you, mate. Look at that artwork. Awesome. What an awesome, awesome vintage toy. And, uh, and Keith says here, his super chat, he says, um, just simply because you are the light in my darkness. Thank you. I love you guys. Love you too, Keith. I got, I got to send, I got to send a special thank you to Keith as well because Keith helped me and Tony with a, a, a small problem. I'm, I was trying to send Tony a special package. He doesn't know what's coming. It's going to make him cry though. But again, I, I couldn't. I couldn't get it to, to. If I wanted to send it all the way to, to Australia, it would have cost an unbelievable amount of money. So Keith was gracious enough to have me send the box to him, and then he would forward it on to Tony. So thank you, Keith, for. Helping make that happen. I'm looking forward to Tony getting it. And, uh, you know, he'll set up some sort of stream or Patreon or something where we can watch him open that up and it'll be a good time. Yeah. All right. Definitely. And then Jeremy Jernigan, thank you once again for a super chat. He says, pro tip, the bone from a chicken wing <laughs> scales perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Are we caught up on super chats? I think we are. Yep. Okay, let's get into the book of Boba Fett. The trailer came out a few days ago, last last week, early this week, I think. Even like Monday, early this week, or I think, yeah. Yeah. And so, ooh, Beomar Monk, a Beomar Monk. There we go. Yeah. So. It, it, what did you guys think of the trailer? I mean, I look. I'm totally in. I I loved. It. I I do have a couple little nitpicks. Not really nitpicks. They're kind of it, for me. It's kind of a big deal. But I thought it looked so cool, man. I love the direction that they're going with, um, you know, Mandalorian and now Boba Fett uh, under John Favreau and Dave Filoni's. Uh, guidance i think those are the two guys you want in charge of star wars storytelling right now um but tony what did you think um when when does this show come out december yeah the end of december the end of december yeah i think right before or right after christmas somewhere around there yeah okay um i thought with 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 the 
the show being so close to I mean, the end of December is technically about a month and a half, you know, six weeks or whatever. Uh, December 29th. December 29th. December 29th. Okay, so about seven weeks or something like that. This really felt much more like a teaser trailer than a full trailer, and I was expecting more of a full trailer this close to the release of the show. Maybe we'll get another one um, between now and then. Um, that was what, you know, sort of the, the, the first thing that I picked up on. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to watch it. I'm excited for it. Um, I was actually talking to Ryan yesterday, Tia Mora Morrison, for anyone who has not seen the film Once Were Warriors, which is the film that I wouldn't exactly say made Tia Mora Morrison famous because a lot of people have never seen it outside of Australia and New Zealand, but it's what, um, allowed him to catch the attention of directors in Hollywood. And then he started to get a lot of acting gigs. Once Were Warriors was a movie, I can't remember when it came out. It's an old film. Uh, he's a lot younger in that. It's a film about um, an impoverished Maori family in modern day New Zealand. He plays the father of a family. He is an, a, a, a big drinker. He's an abusive husband, a, an abusive father. Um, it's a, a, a very a very unsettling drama film, but that man can really act. If you saw if you see his portrayal as Jake DeMas in Once Were Warriors, the dude can act. So I'm excited <clears throat> to see him stretch his acting chops in, you know, having a, a lead role um, in a show like this, which is why there, there was one scene in the trailer where He's, stand, he's outside, he's standing next to Fennec Shand, he's got his helmet off, and he's not speaking in the shot, but they've taken audio from a different shot. I thought that was a bit odd. Um, you hear him speak a lot, but you never actually see him speak with the helmet off with the audio at the same time. Um, I, I, I thought that was a bit of an odd editing choice. Um, Otherwise, I'm 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 waiting to see. I'm waiting to see. I'm I'm probably going to renew my Disney Plus subscription, watch the show, and then cancel it, which is what I do every year. You know, for I, I subscribe to Disney Plus for a, for a month to watch The Mandalorian, and then I get rid of it because I don't watch any of the Marvel stuff they do or anything else. No, you're not missing much. No, uh, <laughs> uh, Bobby, how about you? Are you in? I'm in. I'm in. And, yeah. and again. This is where you see course correction, which is what I like. One of my biggest problems with Boba Fett when they showed him in the Mandalorian was when in a span of like, it seemed like a couple days, he repainted his armor. Like, did he just happen to have like a paint shop on the Slave One? He had the paint that needed to, to match the colors. But it was like, what's so iconic about Boba Fett is how like, like beat up and, and raw he looks. You know, he looks like he's he's been through battles and stuff like that. So when... When they painted him, I was like, he looks so silly. Like, he looks silly. He had, like, half the armor and a black cloak and this pristine painted armor. And I was like, that's not cool. So when I saw this trailer and I saw that it's like, okay, he's been in some battles now. It's like you gave him that grit, that that that, that Boba Fett feel to him. I was happy. Um, I would – I hope – and, you know, I, I think kind of segueing off of what Tony was saying – about wearing the helmet and acting like I have a feeling they're going to show him without the helmet a lot. It's going to be like, you know, Robert Downey Jr. and Iron Man. It's like you only see him as Iron Man with the helmet on when he's really fighting. I hope they don't do that. What's great about Boba Fett was his iconic look. So, you know, I'd rather, you know, I'd rather them treat it like the Mandalorian where he wore the mask constantly, but I have yeah. a feeling they're not going to do that here, which is yeah. fine. You know, it's just, it, it's more of a preference thing. That was my biggest gripe too. I want Boba Fett with the helmet on. Yeah. Not that I don't like Tamara Morrison's face. He's a very handsome man. But um, yeah, I think in the trailer, he was shown more without the helmet, even in fighting yeah. scenes, than with the helmet. Yeah. Um, like right here, you know, I mean, they showed him raising the helmet to put it on. I mean, he looks good. I I almost think he slimmed down a little bit since he I filmed so. The Mandalorian. He was, he was pretty thick in Mandalorian. Yeah, I hope so. 
But he um, has that like, thick build where it's like, okay, that's a dude I don't want to mess with. It's not like spaghetti arm fat dude, you know, like yeah. me that, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm like I said, I'm in. Um, I actually like the look of his repainted armor. Uh, I kind of wish they would dial back the the robe there, the, yeah. the undercloak. Um, I like that they're bringing back Fennec Shand. She was cool. Uh, in I, I can almost do without her. I was like, really? I don't like seeing Boba Fett with a sidekick. Okay. You know? I, I I see it more. Uh, yeah, sidekick partner. Um, I what I really loved was seeing original trilogy aliens like this guy, mm -hmm. the Ithorian, yeah. the uh, Hammerhead. I think, you know, uh, any callback to alien races from the original trilogy is good because a huge problem, and there's many, many problems with the sequel trilogy, is that they didn't really do that. Yeah. It was like all new aliens, and they all kind of looked the same, you know? Yeah. And, and it's like they're not CGI in these aliens. They're like doing prosthetics and costumes and stuff, which is it has that look, that that iconic Star Wars feel. You know, this feels like a Star Wars, you know, yeah. film. So especially it looks like most of this show will take place on Tatooine. We saw that opening shot of Jabba's palace, you know, the, the end, the after credit scene, the Mandalorian, he's sitting down on, on that throne that's on Jabba's, you know, uh, rolling platform. So it looks like from this trailer, it's going to be mostly on Tatooine, which I'm fine with. I mean, Tatooine is probably the first planet I think about when I think of star Wars. Yeah. You know, I mean, it was, the first planet we saw in the original trilogy. Um, originally, I was like, well, is this Moss Eisley? Well, it can't be Moss Eisley because it's in the middle of a canyon. Mm -hmm. So, Tony, I know we talked about it the other day. You were saying this, you know, Moss Eisley is a, like a spaceport in the middle of nowhere. And this might be more of a like a like the New yeah, York this... of Tatooine or something. Yeah, this could be on the other side of the planet. You know, Mos Eisley is a spaceport. This could be another spaceport. Yeah. But is this, like, I don't know. I'm not that great with some of my Star Wars history, but is this Beggar's Canyon? Because it's a canyon. Ooh. That could, could be. be. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know if Beggar's Canyon was just a place where Luke kind of flew his T-16, but, or if that if Beggar's Canyon was actually like a city, like almost like a most Eisley, most Eisley like this. Well, it, it looks on the on the far side like there is a canyon go, going on. Yeah, mm -hmm. right in there. Um, Beggar, Beggar's Canyon. That's that's where a retired alcoholic desert rat should hang out. Well, seeing <laughs> that you know Luke was probably pretty close to Moss Eisley. Yep. And Moss Eisley is where they did the pod race in Episode One. I wonder if that's Beggar Canyon. The mm. canyon in episode one that they're racing the pod. Yeah, I don't know. How, how close is Jabba's palace to Mos Eisley? I would think pretty close because in the special editions, even in the you know the, the scene that was cut from it, you, Jabba was at Mos Eisley. So I'd imagine it's probably it's not like it's on the other side of the planet. Like Jabba's only going to go and try to collect from guys like in the area, you know. So yeah. Mos Eisley is probably close to Jabba's palace. He does have that cell barge he gets around on, though. But that's true. Yeah. Uh, real, yeah think real about quick. how long it's going to take to load him in that sail barge, though. Yeah, he ain't he's moving that true. quick. Yeah. Takes a couple of Gamorreans to push him, <laughs> or a rancor, <laughs> or a rancor. Uh, Master Sun Forty Two, thank you very much for the super chat. He says, "Hi guys, just saying hello. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kevin's. Appreciate it. Um, what? I wonder if when uh, I wonder how long when Jabba actually ordered his sail barge back in the day said yeah 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 I'm, I need this big sail barge I wonder if the manufacturer you know made him pay for it 18 months in advance <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't reckon I don't reckon uh, Jabba the Hutt would be down for that yeah. <laughs> he had to raise the money from all his denizens yeah. Uh, we get uh, another shot there of the throne that Bib, uh, Bib Fortuna was on. So, so can anyone explain this to me? I don't think it's ever been brought up. I thought Bib Fortuna blew up on the sail barge. Okay, and that's what I always assumed too, but apparently there was some novel that explained that he got off the barge or maybe a comic book or something. He he jumped off He's the barge convenient. before it blew up. I don't like think that guy's jumping anywhere. Well, I know, right? <laughs> but, That's really convenient. I, you know, like maybe he saw Jabba getting choked out. And he's like, I'm out of here. I'm going back mm. to the palace. 
Mm. You know, I'm taking control. Um, he but, was I thrown mean, from look, the dude. explosion, landed in the Sarlacc pit. Boba Fett got him out. Oh, God knows. There's Listen, the size, of, the size of Bib Fortuna in The Mandalorian, he probably ate the Sarlacc. <laughs> Well, he was all depressed that Salacious Crumb got killed, his little buddy, and he started, you know, emotionally eating. And uh, he was probably like, "Oh man, I let Luke in because I'm weak minded, and then it got my boss killed. Shit, yeah. man, I'm useless." <laughs> More blue milk. All right. Um, again, Fennec Shand. Um, she she showed up in the Bad Batch, the first season of the Bad Batch, and it made me think of another awesome bounty hunter that could possibly show up in this show. Cad Bane. Ooh. Tony, I don't know how familiar you are with Cad Bane, but nope. I mean... Not at all. Clone Wars Cad Bane, for me, as a kid that grew up in the 80s and 90s, my, you know, my first Star Wars action figure was Boba Fett. Cad Bane is just as cool, if not cooler, than Boba Fett. So if All we right. see Cad Bane pop up live action this show, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna fanboy. I'm gonna soy mouth fanboy. You're gonna and, he, and he's and he's from um, Clone Wars. Yeah, Cad Bane. So he he's a Duros alien, which you see. There's two of them in the cantina. They kind of almost have a classic alien look with the big eyes and small mouth and yeah yeah. They're blue, I think. Um, but he is an awesome awesome character in Star Wars. Uh, again, another shot with Boba Fett. No helmet. Looks like he's going to put it on, or maybe he was taking it off. There's a lot of unhelmeted Boba Fett, which, yeah, I mean, of the whole trailer, that's really my only gripe. I, I, I don't, I don't necessarily think that that we are going to see him unhelmeted a lot. I know it kind of looks like this in in the trailer, but I think. Filoni and Favreau are a bit smarter than that. And, mm -hmm. you know, they did it so well with The Mandalorian, you know. Yeah, they did. Let's let's worry about it when the time comes. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm going to kind of rush through this. Um, but we get some Trandoshans, some, some Bosk aliens here. Uh, another cool call callback. It looks like... Boba Fett is kind of transitioning from bounty hunter to crime lord, which is a little, you know, it's, it's a little new. I, I never would really think of Boba Fett as a crime lord. You know, I, I always kind of assumed he was like the, the solo guy. You know, he's on his own. He's he's a bounty hunter, mercenary. He's in it for the money. But apparently he's decided to move up in the world since Jabba's dead. Um, we see some sand people and then this was cool. And Tony, you brought this up when we were talking the other day. Yeah. Bobby, can you guess who this actress is? The, uh, the fleshy colored twilight here. I got to look closer at her. Let's see. Yeah. Can you make it bigger? Uh, yeah. Let me see here. Uh, how do I zoom? <laughs> oh, here we go. How's that? Um, who is that? <laughs> Someone in the chat said Bobby O'Connor looks like Mini Driver. Um, well, I'm surprised no one in the chat knows this. So, this is Jennifer Beals from 1983's Flashdance. Yep. This beautiful woman is 57 years old. Wow. And from what I've read on the internet, she is going to be a key character in this series. You know, you don't put Jennifer Beals in there for a cameo. She's she's actually a character. She's in IMDb. She's in the cast list. Um, yeah. Damn, 57 years old. Wow. She's gorgeous. And uh, let's beautiful. not forget Ming-Na Wen. She's also in her 50s. So I don't know yeah. what... I don't know what diet they're on or what regimen they're on, but man, sign me up <laughs> I need to be honest, because Dude, they both look like they're in their thirties. Jennifer Aniston is 50. Just going to leave that right there. Yeah. I haven't seen her in yeah. a while. Is she, she, she is gorgeous. Okay. It's better at 50 than she did at like 25. 
I know. Well, I'm. I look good for 27. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the fire spray, the slave one is back. I wonder if they'll call it the slave one. I know there was some drama over calling it the slave better. one. They better. You know. Oh, there, better. there might there might be some drama, like having the the name of that on toy packaging and stuff. Like I think I saw a Lego one of these a while back, and it was called Boba Fett's spaceship or rocket ship or whatever. Um, but in the show, I don't think there'll be an issue with them calling it Slave One. Yeah. Not in the did, show. Did they say Slave One in mean, Mandalorian season two? I don't, don't remember. They don't even have to refer to it as its name. Like when you know. True. Yeah, the original yeah. trilogy, they never said Slave One. That was just on the the toy box. Yeah. Um, and then more tomorrow, more someone without the helmet. He's got his helmet full of like gold coins here or credits. So I, I read, I watched a spoiler video and they like kind of zoomed in and they were able to say those are those are Empire credits. Okay, were, like the ones that Mando was was gonna get in season one, and okay. instead he's like, no, I want Beskar. So there, Empire there credits are still kind of a thing, and they're still trying to mm -hmm. get value for them. Well, we know Republic credits are no good on Tatooine. This is true. They're fighting some sort of police force here with the uh, riot shields. It, Tony, you said these are like I Iron Man style. Yeah, or maybe like Cable from Deadpool 2, the shield. and. Oh, right, <laughs> yeah. You weren't really feeling it. it. It didn't really seem very Star Wars to you. N no, no. I, got, I mean, we, we were talking about the Mandalorian and I was – like so, something I, I I did enjoy the Mandalorian both seasons. One of the things I didn't like was the Dark Troopers. It was just like, you know, the Black Iron Man army you'd come into Star Wars. Um, yeah. Thank you, Sal. Uh, Sal said he did call it Slave One during season two. Okay, thank you. Cool. I'm probably gonna binge watch season one and two this month before this comes out in December. Um. Got some action shots here. We saw him going to town on someone with a, I think that was a gaffy stick, like a Tuscan spear gaffy stick type of thing. Uh, we see the uh, Balchinians, the Ponda Babas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, another callback to original trilogy aliens. Finally in the helmet on the throne. Dig that. And then the title screen, which I think is cool. I think the colors are cool. Yeah. It reminds yeah. me of the vintage figure, you know, the red and the green. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, like, I like that green. Yeah. So December 29th, that'll come out. We were going to talk about the HasLab Proton Pack, but I think we could save that for the next show. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a UFC event me and Bobby want to watch soon. So. Yeah. Uh, we've got one more super chat here from James Salzberg. Thank you very much. He said, Big Fortuna has a gap in his resume that is hard to explain. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, James. Um, all right. Well, there it is. Episode oh, one. Another the... chat. Oh, all right. Jeremy Jernigan. Thank you very much. Those shields are reminiscent of Halo Jackals. Uh, I'm not familiar with Halo. I haven't played Halo since Halo one. And like, is that straight out of the box? Yep. Oh, no. man. Oh, you gonna try to tighten the screw on that thing? Fuck no. <laughs> I I tighten right, the one on mine a, a little bit. It I'm helped gonna, a little, but I'm, I'm afraid to tighten it too much because I know it'll strip. I'm just gonna text Ryan Ting and tell him I want my money back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He, he, he knows the UFC's coming, Bobby. He's just you know he's getting ready to practice his sprawl. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So our our next. Um, Episode will be November 20th. Yep. So every, every other Saturday, every two weeks, um, we'll be here. Same bat time, same bat channel. Um, from time to time, we'll have guests, but we will, you know, we'll, t we'll talk about anything that's, you know, you know, um, so sort of, you know, toy news, but even, you know, that. We're not going to talk movies in general, but you know, if there's a if there's a new Marvel release or a DC release or like the Book of Boba Fett, if there's a new Star Wars announcement, 
we'll talk we'll talk about the the properties the pop culture properties that we know you know the three of us here and the people in the audience you know the stuff that we're into your star wars your superheroes your action force um but bobby are we are we doing anything next weekend are we you and me oh yeah yeah we might be doing something um yeah stay tuned um, i'm gonna i'm gonna work on getting that together and maybe yeah. put out a, a little something on it but i talked to tony and we're gonna do a, a stream together on some cool some cool on stuff Valiverse, not here on over on Valiverse. Links over in the on Valiverse. yep 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 spread the love a little bit you know because i haven't done yeah. a video on Valiverse in, in a while yet i have more views than some gi joe channels out there <laughs> yeah so subscribe to Valiverse for sure um Besides YouTube, Bobby, where can everyone find you? You could find me everywhere, Valiverse everywhere at uh, Facebook, Instagram, Valiverse.com, Valiverse YouTube channel, and that'll pretty much cover everything for you. But make sure that you are going to Valiverse.com and signing up for the newsletter at the bottom of the page or on the contact page because uh, – once the every all the product ships, I'm gonna be using that to really like send out kind of updates. And especially there's going to be a really important update coming sometime towards the mid towards mid November about how series two will work and how the pre orders will work will will work because series two is gonna be split up. Uh, so it's series two A and series two B. The pre orders will be open up at the same time for series two, but they'll ship uh, staggered. So one will go out at the very beginning of, of 2022 and then one, one will go out a couple months later. So all that will be sent out uh, in, in the, the Valiverse newsletter. So make sure you're going on there and signing up for that. So, you're, you know, you're, you're up to date on all the updates that I, that I send out. And you're, you're splitting that wave up just because of the Chinese New Year, right? Yeah, yeah, because, I, you know, I've always said it, you know, it was important to make sure that everyone gets product quick after waiting so long for Series 1. So the, the factory had already been working on series two in tandem, but, you know, they couldn't finish all of it just because, you know, there's other toy lines at that factory and they're, you know, they can only do so much. And series one was so big, they got a lot of manpower towards it. So we were working on series two kind of in the background, but they, they couldn't get it. <clears throat> and I didn't want everyone to have to wait. So I said, Let, let's, let's split it up so that at least you're getting something quick and then the next thing was just going to be a few months after that. So I think it, it, it makes it easier for everyone. It also kind of splits up your shipment. Like, yes, you could pre-order it at the same time, but then you almost feel like you're getting a little now and then a little, you know, a little after that. So, you know, you're getting, I, I certainly prefer it that way, man. More, yep. more frequent, more frequent parcels. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah that's, that's better. Cool. M more frequent desert rat action figure deliveries <laughs> <laughs> where is he he's over no he's over yeah he's over there he is right there oh yeah. yes i had to, awesome. i had to get rid of a figure that was right here a secret figure uh, a big bad exclusive that hasn't been announced yet that was in that spot right there i had Ooh. to move him to make sure no one saw him yet he's exciting times cool. uh, and then tony uh where can people follow you Right here on YouTube, we have a I have a Facebook page. Um, started getting used to Instagram in the last, you know, probably eight nine months. I'm on Instagram. That's it. I don't do Twitter. I hate Twitter. Um, yeah. And of course, for loads and loads of extra content, sign up to the Patreon page. There's a number of different tiers, different benefits for each tier. Um, I recently just purchased a very very expensive. Um, radio controlled up armored Humvee that is perfectly scaled for Valiverse Action Force six inch figures. Um, I've done a Patreon exclusive video about that, not too in depth, but you get to to see it a bit. But I'm not going to be reviewing that toy. That is going to be um, uh, it's going to be used for my upcoming Wave One Valiverse figure reviews. Uh, you, you're going to see uh, an awesome looking up armored uh, Humvee. And Bobby, is that the Desert Rat T-shirt you've got on? Fuck yeah, baby! Look at that. Oh, you got it already. That's I awesome. Got, so I just got it today. Oh, I'm that's like, cool. I, I, I won't get mine for like two weeks. Ah. <laughs> I, was like, I didn't know that T-shirt existed. <laughs> it, it, I, I put it up the same day as um, the three POS. I suppose we, we better tell people that you'll see um, if you're watching YouTube on on the desktop. Um, 
below the, the video, below the description, it says buy analog toys merchandise. You won't see them actually listed across there. Um, there is there is a lot more though on the Teespring web, website. So click one of the links to go over to the Teespring website. You can get yourself a three POA podcast T-shirt, um, or you can get the new uh, Analog Toys Desert Rat T. Comes in a number of colours, customise your size, all of that kind of thing. Um, and I've I've made them as cheap as possible. I the, the you know it does support the channel, but very little. We only make a couple of bucks on each shirt. Um, I'm, I'm more. I'm more interested in people just being able to, you know, wear the analog toy shirt or the, and we've got all sorts of other stuff on there. I've got like Action Man Space Ranger tees and, and things like that as well. So. Cool. cool. Well, you can follow me on Instagram. That's my social media drug of choice. I'm on Instagram at laserpants 81. That's eight one. Um, and you, I co-host the infinity equation podcast right here on YouTube. We're live on Fridays at 5 PM Pacific, 8 PM Eastern. Um, which I, I co-host that with uh, my friends Dante and Alex. And we are going to do a live unboxing tomorrow night on the Infinity Equation channel at 5 o'clock Pacific, if you want to check that out. But uh, anything else, guys? Ryan, I just want to thank you again for agreeing to be the, the host of the show. Um, all the work you put in in the background Um enables me to just you know work on the on the produced content so um i just want to say i thought this was a great first show and i'm looking forward to a a very bright future for the three poa podcast um the next two weeks can't come around quick enough yeah i'm, awesome. I'm looking forward to it um yeah. and thanks to you for i mean just asking me those that i was very surprised and and humbled and um i I'm you looking do forward great, to where this You do a great job, man. Can, can we can we just give can let's just give a hand to Ryan for doing an <laughs> awesome job hosting yeah. today. All okay. right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well, I'm Ryan. I'm Tony. And he's drinking a beer. <laughs> I'm Bobby. So and right. this has been the three POA podcast. Thanks for joining us. Later, everyone. See you guys. <laughs>